Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is the next lecture in the second year module on the internal combustion engine. Um, if you have any comments, queries, or questions, uh, my contact details are on the slide. Um, so please come and see me if you have a problem. Okay, this is the fifth um, lecture in this series. Um, again, I suggest you go and watch the first four if you haven't done so already. And this one is going to focus on heat transfer in the engine. So the main um, contents that I'm going to talk about in this lecture is different modes of heat transfer. So we're generating a lot of heat in the engine from combustion fuel. So how does it transfer to other part of the engines? A bit of recap of some um, basic heat transfer and how this will be applied, um, you know, how these modes of heat transfer can be applied to the engine design. Then talk about um, temperature distributions in the engine. I'll introduce that and hopefully by the end you understand the importance of the um, distribution throughout the engine and I'll also talk about heat losses and heat flow through the, en through the engine so again I'll introduce that and by the end of this lecture I want you to be able to understand the impact of heat flow and heat um, losses through the engine. Okay so there are three basic modes of um, heat transfer so I'm going to introduce them in turn and talk about how they relate to an engine and also give some basic formulae which you'll, you'll need for the tutorial. So the first is conduction. And in an engine context, um, this mode of heat transfer is particularly important between the cylinder head and the engine block, between the piston rings and the cylinder as it's sliding up and down. In fact, that is quite important. That's how you, uh, you, you keep the piston cool. Um, and also between the engine block and the um, manifolds. The generic equation for that, um, you need to take note of this for the tutorial, is that the heat flux, so notice this is in a um, watts per meter squared, or you know heat um, per, per time per area, so the, the heat flux is equal to um, the thermal conductivity of the material times by the temperature difference. So I said that's temperature of the wall on side 1 minus temperature of the wall on side 2, all divided by the thickness of um, the, 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 the material that you're going through. Now um, I've said it's going from 1 to 2, and this is assuming that side 1 is hot and side to is the cooler side but I mean you, this could obviously be the other way around it just means that you get a negative heat flux which will just tell you that the heat is actually flowing the other way. The second mode of heat transfer is convection and this is the main um, one that's taken um, that, that's driving the heat transfer in the cylinder because in the cylinder um, our gases are very hot after the combustion and it's convective heat transfer um, of that, the heat in those hot gases to the cylinder head, the valves, the piston and the cylinder. Um, it is also the main um, heat transfer mechanism in, the, in how we actually um, get rid of the excess heat to stop things melting. So there's it's convection that's driving the heat transfer between the coolant and the, the um, cylinder block. It also is very important in the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold where there's heat transfer to um, to heat up the gases going into the engine which you don't really want and also um, between the hot gases leaving the engine. So the generic equation for that and again take note you'd need this for the tutorial is that the um, heat flux is equal to uh, this parameter here, HC, which is the convective, convective heat transfer coefficient. And this time, the, the delta T is the difference between T um, with this overscore on it, which is basically the, the mean free stream temperature uh, minus the temperature at the wall that you're interested in. The last mode of heat transfer is radiation. Now this is um, only really occurs in a couple of places. Um, 
in the cylinder, in the cylinder, between the the hot gases or soot and the, and the um, cylinder. And to be perfectly honest, this this mode of heat transfer isn't um, significant, particularly um, compared to the convective heat transfer um, proportion. It's more um, uh, more of an issue in diesels where it's the, the soot that radiates and actually give um, a fair amount of radiate, radiative heat transfer. So um, for g gasoline engines, it uh, it can typically be ignored, and also for most diesels too. And you also get radiation from all external surfaces of the engine to the to the surroundings. So this is calculated by um, the Stefan and Boltzmann constant times by the time the temperature of um, the interest in. So this might be the gas to the four minus T two, which is the surface temperature to the um, cylinder um, temperature to the four. Um, this is normally um, times by some sort of emissivity um, constant as well, which is um, you can get from books. Because this is typically neglected in cylinder conditions, don't make a note of this, but this is just purely for um, completeness and to make you aware that the, this type of heat transfer mechanism does take place, but it's not one of the dominant ones. Okay, so I'm just going to go around um, this quite, again, a quite crude drawing of uh, an engine. So we've got the piston sliding up and down this cylinder. Uh, this is a cylinder block. This is a cylinder head with uh, my intake intake valve spark plug in this instance and um, exhaust valve. And this is the cooling chambers um, for um, the, in the engine block to remove the heat. So as I say, I'm just going to go around and talk about this. So basically, in the middle, we're we're combusting fuel, which has given us gas temperatures, which is th thousands of kelvins, um, thousands of degrees of kelvin. And the bottom line is that the um, if the metal were at that temperature, it would melt. It would melt. So we need to remove that heat. Um, not too much because if we remove too much we're going to be um, have a detrimental performance on our power because if we remove too much of this heat that is you, we're cooling these gases down and that, that's less work that's being done on our piston but we need basically we need to keep the wall temperatures um, below the the temperatures which is going to cause them uh, thermal stress and cause them to crack so that's around three or four three to four hundred degrees C for um cast iron and aluminium respectively so we need to keep the temperatures down at uh, that low we also need to keep the um, temperature of the um, the f oil film between the piston and the cylinder below around about 180 maybe low, a bit lower than that but that sort of order because any higher than this and the oil starts to break down and won't actually lubricate the, um, the piston as necessary so there's an important thing there, we need to keep that down. The coolant temperature, must, um, depending on what it is, must be kept below its boiling point. You don't want it boiling in here, otherwise you have a two-phase, um, you have gas and, uh, sorry, vapour and li liquid in here. And so that's basically going to um, completely um, have a big impact on your the, the amount of heat that can be removed. So that, that must be kept to, um, within certain limits. In terms of the intake, the heat transfer to the air it coming into the intake must be mm, minim minimised as much as possible. And the reason for that is if you remember back to the lecture on um, gas exchange, when we are talking about volumetric efficiency, any heating of the air isn't going to reduce the density of the gas, which means that the volumetric efficiency is going to negatively impact the volumetric efficiency. <coughs> so any heat transfer to the air intake air is bad because it's going to heat it up and, and do that. So we want to try and minimize that as much as possible to, to improve overall engine efficiency. Um, spark plugs um, need to be kept cool. Um, for a couple of reasons, one for their operation, but also if they get too hot, they can um, act as a hot spot, which 
um, will then promote knocking within within the engine, um, which is obviously what we don't want. So they need to be kept um, cool as well. And finally, the exhaust. <coughs> we want to um, prevent heat transfer from the exhaust to the manifold this time. Um, the reason for that, we want to keep our exhaust um, gases hot because if we have a turbocharger on our engine, then any heat that's transferred from the exhaust gases to the manifold is heat that we then cannot um, extract from our turbocharging or supercharging, uh, for, sorry, from our turbocharging device. Okay, so now I'm going to show how um, you can start calculating, um, you know, um, what kind of heat transfer coefficients you need and what the temperature on the walls are going to be. So to do that, we're going to consider the temperature distribution. So we're going to say that this is um, uh, cylinder. This is the um, cylinder bore here. This is a liner, and we've got the coolant on this side. So you've got distance along this axis, temperature on this axis, this axis. We've got the gas on this side, and the coolant on this side. And we're going to look at the temperature profile um, through here. So firstly, on the gas side, as we talked about, we've got um, convective heat transfer and ra radiative heat transfer so <clears throat> we got the convection of the gases on the wall and um, radiation of the gases onto the wall then actually through the liner the mode of heat transfer that we've got is conduction so the heat that's um, on this wall is being conducted through and on the other side we ha then have convective heat transfer from this side of the liner into the coolant but if we remember for a gasoline engine we can say that um, radiation can be neglected so basically we what we're saying is we've got conduction so, sorry convection from the gases conduction through the material convection on the other side so the, we can see that QVC is equal to QCN which is equal to QCV on the other side we've got to have the same heat flow all the way through for, ste for steady state we're um, we're assuming that this is a pseudo steady state steady state heat transfer, which, to be perfectly honest, is a reasonable approximation once the engine's um, up to speed and up to temperature, because the um, the change in the um, heat transfer hit so the change in the temperature of the gases, um, as you know, is changing several thousands of times um, per minute. So the actual impact it has on the steady state is is negligible so anyway so let's look at the temperature profile so for the convection we've got a very high kind of gas temperature um, then and as this this will um, temperature profile will decrease as we go through the kind of thermal um, boundary layer till we get to the wall temperature which the temperature of the gas here has to equal the temperature of the, the wall. Um, so we have the temperature of the wall on this side. Then the temperature will decrease linearly through the wall um, until we have a temperature of the wall based on um, the thermal conduct conductivity of the material till we have a temperature of the wall on the other side. And then we have um, another convective um, temperature profile till we get to the temperature of the coolant on the other side and there, there will be a tutorial on this where I'll get you to um, work out some of the temperatures at the wall and some of the heat flows um, through okay so in the um, tutorial so in the lecture I ask you to draw the heat transfer and temperature profile from the intake manifold into the coolant um, during the, the intake stroke and hopefully this is what you should have drawn so remember because you're in the intake manifold the air coming into the cylinder is cooler it's at ambient temperature and the coolant will be at 85 degrees or whatever it is pretty much constant um, as it's going around the engine once it's up to temperature so in fact the the heat transfer is going to go the other way so 
we have a start off at a cooling temperature that will um, follow a non-linear um, distribution till we get to the wall temperature on the coolant side then have a linear temperature distribution through the um, the wall of the intake manifold in the cylinder head till we get to the um, temperature of the the wall on the gas side and then we get then have a non-linear temperature distribution till we get up to the the gas temperature the, um, in the the intake manifold okay so this shows um, the energy flow through an engine and um, again it was it's quite hard to um, say this in any other way so I've kind of unashamedly nicked this um, plot from um, this book on internal combustion engines by John Hayward I've got the QR code to the um, the library link there so if you scan that that should take you directly to the to the um, to the page so right, what we've shown here is we've shown um, kind of a, as I say, a flow of energy through the engine. So the thickness of each of these lines is directly proportional to the percentage of um, energy that's flowing, um, you know, from, from um, through the engine. So we start off. This is one hundred percent. So this is the total fuel energy input. So this is what we're putting in. So if we start at the top and work our way down. So what comes through here is this is the um, the percentage of fuel which is going to which actually is conducted also convected and conducted through the combustion wall um, and that makes its way into the coolant. So a portion of it comes straight through and you can see some join later and we'll talk about those in a minute. The second line this is the um, proportion of the um, energy in the, from the fuel that is basically just exhausted straight out so this is the um, a proportion of this fuel just it's put into the engine it's combusted but we don't extract any work from it and it's just exhausted straight out the engine um, some of that fuel though will um, be taken out some of that um, energy will be taken out through the um, cooling of the exhaust manifold um, that's shown that by there so that's added to the the heat that's rejected by the coolant rather than the exhaust um, and some of it is taken out by radiation um, so that's that line there and some of it's kind of the, the kinetic energy um, that's taken out then some of the fuel um, isn't actually combusted so this proportion here we're talking about was combusted but we couldn't actually make use of it whereas this um, line here is fuel that's uncombusted so that just goes straight in and straight out and is, is wasted um, from is purely, and, purely and simply is wasted these bottom two lines these are um, basically energy that is extracted or work I should say that is extracted from the fuel that's um, useful. Now we'll come on to this uh, these terminologies a bit in a bit more detail um, in the f final lecture when we talk about engine characteristics but basically the the indicated power is almost like the potential of the engine so we've said that we've extracted um, this much energy from the piston but we can't use all of it. In fact, the only bit that's useful, the only bit that makes it to the to the wheels, is the brake power. So this percentage here is actually usable and goes to the wheels. Um, the difference between the indicated and the the brake um, is made up of several things. So that's the friction mainly is <coughs> the big one. So this is the total friction of the um, the piston going up and down, and some of that. Is goes into heat and which comes out in the coolant so you can see that's why that line joins up there and the, the remainder miscellaneous um, uh, heat loss is rejected so you can see that from the 100% um, that we put in a fair proportion of it goes into the coolant a fair proportion of it is just exhausted some is um, completely um, y you know isn't even combusted <clears throat> and we actually only end up with a 
um, not very much, which is actually useful, which uh, we can use as, as power. This plot shows um, that kind of slightly differently. So if you think back to the last page, um, you know, we were shown how energy flows through the engine. So this is kind of plotting it, um, you know, stacked up. So for a particular engine speed, it's showing the ratio of um, fuel energy that's converted into brake power, um, so useful energy that we can that we can use. The amount that's um, rejected by by the coolant, the amount that's rejected by the exhaust, and the remainder that's radiated or just pass um, straight through the engine. So you can see then that as we increase our vehicle speed the radiation in complete combustion kind of stays um, approximately uh, th the same but the amount that's transferred to the to the coolant um, actually decreases so you can see as we increase in our, our speed we're actually getting more of the energy as um, we're extracting as brake power and less we're actually putting into the coolant load so for low um, at low speeds, um, the brake power, sorry, the, the heat that's um, rejected by the coolant load, something like two to three times the energy that you're extracting as power, which is quite quite incredible when you think about it. Um, and that ratio drops as you actually increase increase speeds, just showing how in inefficient it is at low, low speeds. So, what if we could recover some of that energy? This is just going to, just one on this plot to kind of show that even if we could recover some of that energy, it wouldn't make um, much difference in a way. So if we say that we got our energy from the fuel, that's 100%. So let's just say, theoretically, so this is for a compression ignition engine, that um, we can extract 45%, it's 45% efficient, idealised. That, that, so that's our indicated power. And let's say 25% of it's lost in cooling and another 20% by other means. So from our cooling load, so we've got 25%. Let's say 2% of that is friction. We can't recover that. that that's gone. <clears throat> but 23% is lost as heat loss um, f from the um, cylinder into the coolant. And let's say from that heat loss, 8% is um, f during the combustion stroke, 9% is in the exhaust stroke, and 6% is in the expansion stroke. Well, we can't really get anything from the, the exhaust stroke, but we can get something from the combustion and the expansion stroke. So even if we say that um, from the combustion stroke, we can extract two-thirds of that, or half of it, let's say. So we got four percent use useful energy back, whereas waste we've wasted four. And for the expansion stroke, let's say we can get a third of that back, so we get two percent back, and we waste four. So we're saying this is energy that we can get back um, from, you know, um, be better light like liner or whatever. It's only six percent. If you add those up, that gives us six. It's only six percent that we could actually put back into our um, into our efficiency. So, in fact, although a lot's put into the cooling, there's not a whole lot we can really do about it in in actually recovering the energy. So we're we're, we're almost um, stuck with it. So we need to find other ways to do that. So the the temperature distribution in components is quite important um, and a lot of work's been put into this not just in experimental um, to experimentally derive sorry to experimentally measure the temperature distribution in different components but also to model it using um, FEA so by trying to understand the temperature distribution through different components in the engine. So I've got some examples here. It's temperature distribution in a piston, and you can see the cutaway to see the, the profile through. Um, 
so you can see it's very hot in the middle and cooler on the outside because remember the only way that this can um, transfer heat is from the the surface which is um, um, has the heat transferred to it from the gases and then it's conducted through the um, compression rings into the cylinder liner we have an engine cylinder head here um, see the end the temperature profile in there and this is a um, one half of a valve and because it's symmetrical it's only one half is shown there so the valves also have a the, the temperature just distribution though is quite important so to say the the <clears throat> understanding the temperature profile in each of these components is important because where you have a change in temperature you've got a, a thermal stress and if we know the thermal stress and this needs to be added to the mechanical stress so that we can manufacture these components um, correctly so that they won't um, crack or fatigue when when they're running at operating conditions and also by knowing the temperature distribution of um, each of these components it allows us good good design of the the coolant system as well <clears throat> so that we can actually keep these components below their um, design operating conditions okay so um, just to recap so we talked about different modes of uh, heat transfer conduction convection and radiation and how they um, are important in terms of the engine we talked that convection is the most um, dominant heat transfer mechanism because that's how the the heat is transferred um, from the gases into the cylinder the liner and into the coolant we also mentioned that radiation is pretty much negligible um, in terms of all the other heat transfer modes that are going on talked about the temperature distribution in an engine and how we can use that to calculate what um, various wall temperatures are and um, help help design our components and understand the importance and how um, if there is a significant temperature gradients in the components that will cause um, thermal stress which needs to be um, accounted for in terms of the engine design and then finally we talk about, about heat losses and flow we looked at the energy that's put into an engine and how um, proportions how much of that goes straight to the exhaust how much makes its way into the coolant um, and how much is actually extracted as useful energy and we understood can now understand the impact of that at various speeds so that concludes this lecture on the heat transfer in internal combustion engines um, as I say Mike there's my contact details again there in case you need to get hold of me um, thank you very much for listening